On a crosscut saw, the teeth are filed with alternate bevels. Then a file following the original bevel of the tooth until the tooth comes back up to a point and that little shiny mark is gone. Normally I would file this tooth a couple of strokes and do this tooth and then do this tooth and go down the, the saw blade in alternate sides, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Once I have those teeth file down to points, then I can take my gauge. It's only 15 thousandths, it's kind of hard to see. But you can see that the feeler gauge runs into the tooth. File off the raker teeth until they're 15 thousandths below the surface. Then I take my file and I take that edge. So the little flat on the end of the raker tooth is gone.
Now that raker tooth is 15 thousandths below the point of the crosscut teeth on either side of it. The knife shaped tooth. This one will slice through on this side, that one will slice through on that side, so that this one slices, that one slices, raker comes through. On the return stroke, this one slices, that one slices, raker comes through. Some saw sharpeners use a punch and tap the raker teeth. to form a slight curl on the end. I don't typically do that. I think that the edge that I, that I put in there cuts sufficiently that I don't need to do the extra step. I think it makes a thin point on that and weakens it. This is a uh, tearing tool. It's not actually going to go through and slice as much as it's going to chunk that piece out that these knife blades have taken out. So if you want to try the the punching method you're welcome to it but I don't think it's any more effective than what I've just done here. That's the sharpened tooth. There's a dull tooth to the left and a dull tooth to the right. You can see the flats on top. This is the one that I sharpened the crosscut teeth on. And this is the gauge. And we can see that the teeth don't point up above the flats on the gauge. You don't want to go any more than 15 thousandths because then all you're doing is making this tooth cut more than what it needs to. You're adding extra work to the job. The part that's removing the material, the part of the tooth set that's removing the material is the raker. We want to just score it and then remove the material with the raker. After you've jointed the blade and you've got a nice shiny point on the end of each one of these teeth, you can take the gauge and you'll notice how it slips over one of the pointed teeth and the raker tooth. It can either go that way or that way. The only thing we have to be careful of is not to file off that pointed tooth. We only want to take off just the raker tooth. Then with that held securely, take the file. and file off that raker tooth. This surface is hardened. The file just slides across it. You'll polish it, but you won't cut it. Make sure we don't hit the tip on that one. And we take that down. Then we go on to the next one and do the same thing.
once we have the tooth filed down with a gauge, then we need to file that tooth until the little shiny spot on both sides goes away. When we file this down to those shiny points go away, we'll have our tooth shape correct.